Android has a language feature called scope functions that essentially allows you to define a function that gets executed directly on a specific object. There are five scope functions named let, run, with, apply, and also. These functions are differentiated by three characteristics that determine their use and behavior. The first is the object reference, which is how do you reference the object on which the scope function is being executed from within the function? Next is the return value, which determines what you get back from the scope function once it has completed executing. Lastly, whether or not the scope function is what we call an extension function will determine how you implement that function. Let's take a look at each of these in turn to get an idea of how they're used. Here I have a simple program where I've defined a person class with a single property name. I've created an instance of that class. I'm calling that person Mike. And what I'm going to do is manipulate this person object using the various scope functions, keeping track of and then printing the result. Executing this code as is, I see that what I'll get is an object reference at a particular location. That is, of course, because this person object has its reference copied and then printed. As I apply each of the scope functions, you'll see that the result I get will change, starting with let. So the let scope function uses it as its object reference. That means when I'm using the let scope function, if I want to access the object on which the function is being defined, I have to use the it keyword. The return value from let is the lambda result, meaning whatever the last statement in my function evaluates to, that is what's going to be returned. Let is what we call an extension function. That means that I'm going to use the dot notation to implement it as if it was a function defined inside the object's class. So using it here, I use the dot notation. If I now want to access the properties of the person object, I'll use the it keyword and I'm able to do things like change the name to Kevin. Now, if I execute this code as is, the result will be unit. This is because let will return the lambda result, i.e. the last statement in my code. It will be evaluated and whatever the, ret the resulting value is will be sent back. Now, this is an assignment statement, meaning it's not evaluating to anything other than unit, which is Kotlin's version of Java's void. If I actually wanted to return something useful, then I would, of course, simply reference it here. So if I wanted to return the new name, I would use that as my last statement. And now running this code, I'll get back Kevin. Next up, we have run. Run, unlike let, will use this as its object reference. However, just like let, it will use the lambda result as its return value, and it is an extension function, which means using it, we can simply change let to run. However, the it keyword can no longer be used. We'll need to use this. If I now run this code, I'll get back essentially the same thing, Kevin. Now, we need to note here that oftentimes whenever we're using the this keyword, it can be excluded because unless the this keyword is being used to differentiate between an object property and some other reference that is within scope that shares the same name, you do not need to have the reference, it's redundant. So if we wanted to remove all superfluous code, then this is what we would end up with. And of course, we'll get the same result. Now, 
you should also note that run can be used without a context object to simply define a block of code that gets executed. This is very similar to defining uh, an anonymous class and, and, and invoking it in line. Um, and certainly you may see this in certain examples and you may find uses for it in your own projects. However, the more common use case is as an extension function as you see here. Next up, we have the with scope function. With uses this as its object reference and it also returns the lambda result. However, with is not an extension function. And as a result, if we want to get it at a context object, we have to pass it in as an argument, which means that the syntax for with looks something like this. with person manipulate whatever properties you would like and return whatever value you would like. So this gives us the same output, but notice that person is passed in as an argument. There is not that we're not using an extension function. Next up, we have apply. Now apply uses this for its object reference, just like a couple other scope functions before it. However, unlike any other scope function we've seen so far, apply does not return a Lambda result. Instead, it returns the object on which you are defining the scope function. So we'll see what that, what that gives us in a second. And Apply is an extension function, just like a few others that we've seen before. So I'll use the dot notation to implement it. So in order to use apply, go back to what I had before, I can simply type apply. However, when I'm applying, if I were to say change name to Kevin, and I wanted Kevin to be printed as my result, if I were to try to do something like this, I'm not going to get the result I intend. Rather, if I execute this code, I'm going to get an object reference, much like I did in the beginning, because apply does not return the last statement as the Lambda result. Instead, it returns the person object itself. So it will manipulate whatever properties you ask it to, execute whatever code you ask it to, but then it will return the object. That means if I actually wanted to access the name, then I would have to take this entire object and access the name property. That will allow me to get access to the name value. Lastly, we look at also. Also uses it as its object reference. And just like apply before it, it uses the context object as its return value. It is also an extension function, so we can use the dot notation. So what does this one look like? Well, we simply change apply to also, except now if we want to access the properties, we need the it keyword. Similarly, applying name, appending name at the end allows me to access the name property. Without it, I would have an object reference. Now, the good thing about the object reference that gets returned by also as well as apply is that it can allow me to do things like chain a series of calls together. And this may actually be useful in certain contexts. So you can actually have a chain of scope functions where each of the, each of the functions up to and including the penultimate function can be apply or also since it will return the object itself and the last uh, function can be what then will return some resulting value, uh, if that would make sense in your context. So those are the scope functions. Checking out the documentation, you can actually see rationale for when each of these can be used. But as you get more practice with these scope functions in Kotlin, they'll start to make more sense and you'll be able to best determine pretty much on the fly 
when to use a specific scope function. Additionally, they'll make a lot of sense to you as you see them in examples and documentation.